Came here to spill the tea, ended up spilling coffee all over the floor. That's gross. I'm a mess today, I'm sorry. Now let's get it together real quick. This coffee isn't even hot anymore. The other week I did a video where I took Gabby Bernstein's writing course on how to manifest your best-selling book. As an author myself, I had quite a lot of things to say about it. In addition to that, just a couple weeks ago on Your Morning Guru, we followed Gabby Bernstein for a week where we looked at her manifestation and I came up with the conclusion that Gabby Bernstein, sorry guys, this isn't gonna be very nice. I think Gabby Bernstein is what happens when you take over a thousand hours of other business gurus and feed them into a machine learning program. In my other video I talked about how she kind of looked like Heidi Powell and Rachel Hollis combined, but her speech sounds a lot like stuff you'd hear from maybe Mel Robbins. And she's got some serious Jen Sincero vibes as well, even if it's not in her appearance. Like honestly, I think that someone forced a machine learning program to watch like 10,000 hours of all the business guru speeches and Gabby Bernstein is what came out of the program. She's very robotic when she talks. She doesn't have a lot of vocal range. Like I can't really hear emotion in her voice a lot of the time and I think maybe that's part of like the chill guru exterior that she's trying to portray to us but it also makes me think that maybe she's actually an artificial intelligence program I'm really not sure but savvy you might be saying all of those gurus you mentioned have something in common that we haven't heard from Gabby Bernstein about yet and that's that they've all promoted multi-level marketing companies in some way shape or form generally through giving a speech at a multi-level marketing convention or promoting an MLM product on their Instagram or something like that but has Gabby ever done that? She seems to have all the other pieces in place, but has she ever promoted MLM savvy, you might be asking? Yes, yes she has, and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Hit you some nuts. There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should pick up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys asked for it. What's up my fellow small business supporters? I'm Savvy, welcome back to Savvy Writes Books. This is the channel where we talk about books and business and Gabby Bernstein is someone who has lots of books out, many of which we will be reviewing on this channel very soon. And she is a business guru extraordinaire. She's basically just an archetype of a business guru. Like I said, you feed 10,000 hours of other business gurus into a machine learning program, Gabby Bernstein is what you get out of them. She even looks like a bunch of them mashed together. Today, we are going to be taking a look at Gabby Bernstein's pro MLM article that she wrote for the Huffington Post about a decade ago. Somehow this post came out that long ago and I didn't know about it until recently. So we're gonna read it, we're gonna break it apart, we're gonna break it down. Today's video is not sponsored, but I have something I'd like to promote real quick that is related to the anti-MLM sentiment of this video. So as you guys know, I've been an anti-multi-level marketing creator for about three years now. Back in 2019, I started adding that shady business practices critique element to my channel when talking about the business of book writing and writing books about business and doing those reviews and things like that. And I have a lot of reasons personally for why I am against this particular business structure. And because of that, I'm very grateful that I'm actually going to be a featured panelist at an upcoming conference against multi-level marketing companies. One of the organizers of this conference is The Recovering Hunbot. I'm sure a lot of you guys have probably watched her channel before. She and I did a collab video about a year ago where we broke down business guru practices in their courses and how those things are scammy. But she does a really great job of having in-depth research-driven videos about how to break down the lies within these companies and historically why they haven't worked out or been very successful for people. So she has been organizing this conference, which is going to have a ton of amazing collaborators. Here it is. This is the Multi-Level Marketing the Consumer Protection Challenge 2022. This conference is going to be running on Zoom on June 10th and 11th. So that is next weekend, the weekend after this coming weekend. This conference brings together expertise from among regulators, prosecutors, former MLM distributors, social media consultants, consumer advocates, researchers, educators, and journalists to discuss ways to improve consumer protection and reduce consumer harm within the multi-level marketing industry. So this is a conference basically about, you know, protection of consumers and, you know, former MLM victims speaking out and sharing their stories, basically talking about solutions to these issues that multi-level marketing companies cause. I'm going to be speaking during session six, where Alanda from The Recovering Hunbot is going to be the moderator, and I'm going to be there with a lot of other online content creators, including some YouTubers you guys 
guys have probably seen on this channel before, one being one of my best friends, Monica Hayworth. She's fantastic. She's going to be there. So if you want to see me, Monica, Alanda, a bunch of other creators, join us for session six and join us for as much of the conference as you possibly can. In the description below, there is a link where you can register for this conference if you are interested in participating. Hope it is something you guys can come to. Now, let's talk about Gabby Bernstein. So this is the blog post that Gabby Bernstein wrote uh, back in 2010. So that's now 12 years ago. And then she updated it in 2011. So isn't that crazy how that's that's that many years ago. But we do know that this is the Gabby Bernstein because it does say in her bio right here, speaker, author of Add More Ink to Your Life, Spirit Junkie, and May Cause Miracles. She now has a bunch of additional books out. She has Super Attractor. That's one of the ones that I ordered from a local woman-owned bookstore. We always love to give a small business shout out. The bookstore that I ordered it from was Semicolon Bookstore in Chicago, which I believe is the only Chicago bookstore to be owned by a black woman. Uh, I'll double check that, but I think that is the case. So guys, support small businesses. Support small businesses owned by women, owned by people of color, owned by the LGBTQ community. Support small businesses. We love that here. Don't support network marketing. Creative Abundance is this blog post written by Gabby Bernstein, where her deck up here says, network marketing, once considered a pyramid scheme, has now turned into a recession-busting profit center. Okay, we're, we're gonna unpack this. New York City's finest female self-starters are stimulating our economy one conversation at a time. This is so wrong. Oh my god, this is so wrong. Let's start unpacking this right here. Okay, so first of all, once considered a pyramid scheme. Is this a Mitch Hedberg joke you're making? You know how Mitch Hedberg would say, I used to do drugs. I still do, but I used to too. <laughs> is, that, is that what you're doing here, Gabby? Or you'd be like, network marketing used to be considered a pyramid scheme. It still is, but it also used to be. <laughs> Recession busting profit center, that's problematic on many levels because if we keep in mind that this article was first posted in 2010, you remember the big 2008 recession? This was like two years after that started. This was 2010, so the economy was uh, effed up. I mean, it still is, but but the idea that she's like capitalizing on the recession here, that's gross, Gabby, that's gross. Finest female self-starters. Okay, first of all, I don't know why, but finest female self-starters made me think of in the movie Good Burger when uh, Keenan is talking about what he's gonna do for the summer. You guys remember the movie adaptation of Good Burger? Good Burger was my favorite all that skit. It was one of my favorite movies. Can you believe that that movie came out 25 years ago? Good Burger's from 1997, isn't that insane? Anyway, Good Burger, and then, so Keenan and his friend, right before they have the car accident that leads to Keenan having to work at Good Burger for the summer. He's talking about how that summer he's gonna invite over some fine females. Every time he says fine females, I lose it. And I don't know why, but this is like New York City's finest female self-starters. Like they're going over to Keenan's Good Burger party because there are some fine females. <laughs> Again, this is one of those things where I just like the whole self-starter. That's the language of being a small business owner. I really hate when multi-level marketing tries to co-opt small business owner language. I don't like it. As you guys know, I'm a small business owner. I run a business called Forever Home Friends. Series of books and plushies about real life rescue dogs and their journeys to adoption. Except now we're also including cats because our first cat character, Max, is available for pre-order. Book illustration just finished. Cover reveal coming soon. Stay tuned. Very exciting. Um, But my point is I've spent, this is one of the reasons that I first got into anti-MLM content creation is that I spent so long working on starting up my own business, becoming an author, doing something creative, and I got really upset to see these companies that were just basically hiring people as distributors. Not hiring, we'll unpack why that's untrue. But they were basically just taking people being distributors of these products and having them take up spaces at small business fairs, having them take up spaces at art fairs and craft fairs and festivals and places where people go to meet local business owners, but in instead someone's just reselling a product that is created by a major national corporation. And then on top of that, the people who are selling those products, I often never got mad at them. I would get mad at the company itself for allowing this to happen. But I never got mad at the individual distributors because a lot of them are victims as well. A study by John M. Taylor, which was posted to the FTC website, although I will disclaimer it and say it's not officially FTC sanctioned research. However, the math does check out and it found that over 99% of people in MLM companies don't make money. I know a lot of us have heard that statistic many times before, but my point is the people who are in MLM companies are victims just as much 
And to use that self-starter language to co-opt this idea of innovation and entrepreneurship and being creative and starting something small and new for yourself, it's just such a misnomer and it's so manipulative. I really hate that. Stimulating our economy. I have an issue with this as well. So there's a, a channel that I've promoted on the Your Morning Guru show before. It's called Page the Puppet. If you've noticed the puppet in my background, the one I used in my other Gabby Bernstein video, that puppet was created by the same small business owner, same artist who created Page the Puppet. The puppet. I'll link the channel below. But basically this channel, in this channel, Paige the Puppet is a puppet and she talks about small business ownership and that kind of thing. And she is also anti-MLM. This puppet's anti-MLM. It's We even have puppets in our community. I love that. But one of the things that she regularly talks about on that channel is how the reason that MLMs shouldn't count as small businesses is that they're not actually really putting money into the local economy. Like a lot of times, if you support a small restaurant, if you support a local restaurant, a local bookstore, a local farmer's market, if you support a local crafter, you are putting money into the community because a lot of times those people are also sourcing their products locally. And even if they're not sourcing all of their materials locally, that's also a local business. The money is circulating within your community and making your community stronger. With an MLM company, the money's not circulating within your community. You are giving money to a person who is making a tiny percentage of commission, but most of it is going to paying for more product that is being produced on this giant national scale with these massive companies. MLMs love to have it both ways. They love to say, we're a company with hundreds of thousands of people. We have so many distributors. We're huge. We're taking over the world. We're going to be the next biggest thing. They love to do that and then turn around and be like, yeah, but we're small businesses. We're small, we're small businesses. You can't, you can't, you can't have it both ways. Okay. Anyway, that's that's just the deck. We're not even into the body of this article yet, but just the deck had so much wrong, I got upset. Okay, so let's see what Gabby has to say about why she is pro MLM. When my brunch conversation shifted from job loss to passive income, I knew my girlfriends were onto something good. I hate when people use the word girlfriends to refer to their platonic friends. Unless Gabby is talking about being in a polyamorous relationship with multiple women, which if so, good for you, girl. Like, get it. But I, I get the feeling that's not what she's talking about, just based on what I know of her life. It just makes it confusing. Like, if you mean friends, say friends. People can tell what gender you're talking about from context. That's just my personal opinion, because you don't see men running around saying, I was having lunch with my boyfriends. You don't see that, so why not just call them friends. I love that she's talking about brunch too, because I'm wearing a, br a t-shirt from my favorite brunch place, which is also a small business. This is Golden House Restaurant. I love how the text kerning is bad on the shirt because it looks like it actually looks on the side. <laughs> it's great. Anyway, this is a t-shirt from my favorite brunch place. So the conversation shifted from job loss to passive income. Already, I don't feel like we're on a good track. I feel like she's exploiting job loss. Again, remember, she was talking about the recession. This is 2010, so Gabby's friends maybe lost their jobs in the 2008 recession and then got exploited into a pyramid scheme, like someone took advantage of them and roped them into this. And now she's like, well, now they're talking about having passive income. So she knew they were onto something good, or maybe they'd gotten scammed. People who get scammed are sometimes excited about the scam at the beginning because they don't yet know they've been scammed. So it doesn't mean they're onto something good. The shift occurred when they got hip to the network marketing machine. At least she calls it a machine. What was once considered a pyramid scheme has now turned into a recession busting profit center. Again, it was once considered a pyramid scheme and it's still considered a pyramid scheme. I think she's trying to make the point here that because her friends are talking about passive income instead of talking about job loss, that now they must be doing better financially. They must be making more money, but there's no proof of that. Instead, it could just be that they feel like they found an income opportunity, they found something that they could do, and they think they're gonna end up making money in this, but they haven't experienced the extreme debt that 99% of people in a multi-level marketing companies will go on to experience. Anyway, who paid Gabby to write this article? Network marketing is a structure designed by corporations to turn brand loyalists into distributors. No, that's affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing is like, okay, if you are someone who really likes a brand of something, this would have been, if, I, if this video were sponsored, this would be a great time for me to be like, for example, watch me do it. <laughs> but uh, no, this video isn't sponsored. But for example, if you are, you really like a certain brand, sometimes brands will allow you to sign up for an affiliate code, right? And then someone can purchase that thing using your affiliate code and you get a small commission for being the one to refer that person to it. That's a thing that you can do. That is not MLM, right? So for example, uh, my business, Forever Home Friends, I have a 
link where people can sign up to be an affiliate of that if they want. And then if they recommend it to their friends and someone buys it through their affiliate code, they get like a couple dollars in commission from the sale. That is not what MLM is. MLM is multi-level marketing. Affiliate marketing is one level, right? It's the company and it's you. Multi-level marketing is when you also then go on to recruit other people to also be selling the, the product and then you earn more commission based on how many people you recruit into your team. This is why people think it's a pyramid scheme because it ends up being shaped like a pyramid. What she's describing here could be legitimate for affiliate marketing. But if we're talking about multi-level marketing, no, multi-level marketing has multiple levels, which means that you're encouraged to recruit more people, which means that you're going to max out on the number of people that exist in the world, or at the very least, max out on the number of people that are selling a product in relation to how many people actually want to buy that product as an end customer. A lot of times, an, is an issue with MLMs is a lot of people make a lot more money based on how many people they recruit into the company who then will go on to pay starter kit fees and then will go on to get auto ship and get products distributed to their house and things like that. And people will make money off of that from the people under them. So it becomes more profitable to focus on recruiting a team than it does on selling a product to the end customer. Well, if you take that, if you, if you continue doing that forever, who's actually going to be left to be the end customer? And will there be enough customers that want that very specific product that they're going to need that many different people selling it? We know about how supply and demand works, guys. If there's too much supply and not enough demand, no one's gonna be making money. This smart business model is the perfect money maker for proactive out of work New Yorkers. Those looking to rebuild their savings are entrepreneurs who rely on payment upon services rendered. It is not any of those things. First of all, it is, I guess you could call it a smart business model. It depends on what you mean by smart. It's smart for the people who found the company, yes, because they end up getting filthy rich. If you guys remember, I did the Lula Rich video review of that company. So using LulaRoe as an example, right? That's a company where Mark and Deanne, who founded the company, they became millionaires. They have so much money now. They're super rich because they were the ones raking in all of the money. Meanwhile, the majority of actual LulaRoe distributors went into tens of thousands of dollars of debt. One of the main reasons being they were supposed to continue buying clothes, hoping their customers would want to buy them, and then recruiting other people to sell the same clothes. And I mean, when I say the same, you know, a LulaRoe person could come in and say, well, there were slightly different patterns and they were different types of things, but they were recruiting more people to just sell more clothes, they were continually having to purchase their own inventory to then sell at a set price by the company. So this is not good business model for entrepreneurs because you don't get to set your own prices. You don't get to determine the product. Uh, in LuLaRoe, as the example that we're giving, one of the things that went wrong was that a lot of distributors didn't have any quality control over the product themselves. So if they ended up getting a product that was damaged in some way, sometimes the company would just be like, eh, not our problem. Or sometimes they would let mold grow in the leggings. Or sometimes the leggings would rip when the company changed manufacturers. And that distributor did not have any control over who the manufacturer was because, again, it wasn't their business. If it's your business, you should be able to make those decisions. And you might say, okay, but what about in a franchise? If you own a McDonald's franchise, you don't get to determine what goes in the burger, right? That's determined on a corporate level. Well, sure, but you're also never going to be asked to recruit other people to open another McDonald's on your block because people understand that basic competition is not going to allow that to work. You don't want to recruit more competitors for yourself. That's business 101. So anyway, it, that's why it's a terrible model. Does Gabby know this? I'm not sure if she knows it. But again, she is thousands of hours fed into a machine learning program. So that's probably why she's just regurgitating the most common points ever made about MLMs. The hippest part of all, what hippest? Is this like 2002? What do you mean the hippest? The hippest part of all is that it's young women who are the big players in the network marketing machine. Leave it to the ladies to bring abundance back. Okay, so really this is literally Gaslight Gatekeep Girl Boss right here. Gabby's like, I'm Gabby Girl Boss. Here's my Gabby Girl Boss vibes for you. It's women doing this. Yes, it's primarily women being targeted and exploited in MLM companies. We've talked about the reasons why before on this channel, but the reasons being a lot of multi-level marketing companies prey on young women, specifically young mothers, especially young single mothers and young low-income single mothers. Because in the US, we have, we're gonna go over this again, we have a system where it's a little difficult from 
mothers to go back to work after giving birth because we don't have good protections around maternity leave. And then there's a lot of companies that will like, we talked about this with like Dave Ramsey and people like that. There's a lot of companies that will try to, you know, kind of get around discriminating against pregnant employees because it's like, okay, you know, from my capitalist businessman perspective, if I'm running a company and this person gets pregnant and has to take time off of work, well, then I have to train someone else to do their job. So I'm going to take a loss. So it's better for me to just not let a uh, pregnant Pregnant people get promoted whatsoever because it's too big of a risk, right? So there ends up being a lot of pregnancy discrimination. So then you get young mothers who aren't able to get promoted in the first place due to systemic disadvantages and systemic sexism in the workplace. They're making less money than their male counterparts. And as a result, when they take time off of work to give birth, a lot of times if they are in a relationship with a man, a lot of times that man will have had an advantage at work and will often make more money and then daycare is so expensive. So a lot of women will be like, well, maybe I should have to stay home with my kid because that might be the most cost efficient thing to do. So they start staying home with their kid and then, wow, it turns out that living on one income in the U.S. is really hard, especially since we don't have universal health care. So lots of us are reliant on our, on our employers for health care. So if you have only one person who's employed, then they have to pay a higher amount of money for the health care to add another person onto it. Okay, well now we're losing money there. Okay, so now how do we're going to raise this family on one income? Well, you need to get a job, but you can't get a job that's outside of the home because if you get a job outside of the home, then we have to pay $20,000 a year to send the kids to daycare and we don't have that much money. In come the MLM companies to say, you can make money from home with us. They prey on a lot of struggling young mothers, right? So they do that, and then the MLM companies are like, yeah, make money from home with us. And then a bunch of women are like, all right, well, I don't really have many other options right now, so I'll sign up for this and hope that I can support my family on it. Next thing you know, the company's manipulating you with this language, like, ooh, just buy a few more products. You gotta get to the next level. You don't wanna, you don't wanna become inactive. If you don't, if you don't sell enough PPV this month, you're not, you're gonna become inactive. So then you basically end up becoming a customer of the company instead of primarily, and you're not an employee, you become a customer because you end up buying the products with the idea that you're going to resell them to other people. But because there's so many other people, including the person that recruited you in this company, you're not going to have enough customers that are going to buy it to make a reasonable income. You end up losing a ton of money, but then you struggle to get out because at that point there's a massive sunk cost. Our brains are, tend to tend to give into the sunk cost fallacy because we figure, well, we've already gone this far. Why should I give up now? And that's exactly what the people who are above you in the company are telling you because they have a motive to tell you that because they're profiting off of you the more money you spend and the more people you recruit. There's a reason why MLMs target women. And it's that. And I just want to say MLMs don't target exclusively women. There are lots of MLMs that target men. And I've noticed that the way they target women versus men is different. I don't think most MLMs target non-binary people very much. I haven't seen a lot of it. I don't, I don't know why that is. Probably because MLMs are more common in religious communities and people in religious communities are more likely to suppress being LGBTQ in some way. Men do get targeted by MLMs too. They get targeted by a lot of more like idea-based ones versus product-based ones. A lot of product-based ones where you sell makeup, skincare, clothes, whatever. A lot of women get targeted by those. Then a lot of men get targeted by ones that are doing like crypto things and real estate things and selling legal services. There's MLM schemes for all those things too. But yes, a lot of them do, a lot of the most common ones do target women. And that is not something to be proud of that is exploitative. Neurobiological expert Luann Brizendine hypothesizes that women speak over 20,000 words a day. If we're spending that much time talking, we better have something to sell. And now we do. New York City's finest female, <laughs> fine females, New York City's finest female self-starters are stimulating our economy one conversation at a time. If you're spending that much time talking, we better have something to sell. MLMs try to exploit everyone's personal relationships because you're, they always encourage you. You, right? Like recruit your family, recruit your friends, anyone in your life. You can pitch to them. When we reviewed Eric Worre's book GoPro on this channel, he talked about how everyone's a prospect, right? Everyone in your life is a prospect. You're supposed to make lists where it's like, here's all my relatives. Here's all the friends of my relatives. Here's all the people I know from work. Here's all this. Here's all that. You're supposed to contact every single person you know. And people above you in the MLMs and the training materials, and I know this guys because I reviewed the training materials on this channel, the training materials tell you straight up to to make all your conversations about selling your product. People in MLMs who have gotten out report so often that they end up destroying a lot of relationships in their lives because this won't come as a shock to anyone, but most people don't like to be constantly sold to 
They don't like people constantly trying to push something on them instead of ever just having a genuine human conversation. It's almost like when you spend time with your friends and your family, they want to just like spend time having fun and get to have regular conversations rather than having you sell something to them because relationships shouldn't be just based on profit. And like, what kind of dystopian world are we living in where it's like, if you're spending that much time talking, you better have something to sell. Fuck off, get. I featured four of my fabulous friends who are making major moves in the network marketing business. I'm confident their stories will help you further understand the benefits of this creative profit center. MLMs are the like the least creative thing you can do because the company, again, makes you sell their product as it is. They tell you what price to, to set it at. They often provide a lot of the marketing materials for it too, so there isn't even really any creativity in that element of it. But one of the reasons I wanted to be a small business owner is because I like being creative. I like writing my own books. I like creating and modifying toys, as you guys know. I love making things and designing things and coming up with ideas for things, and that's the reason that I love being a business owner. In MLMs, they create the product for you. You're just supposed to sell it. It's literally just being a salesperson, but without any salary or benefits. There's nothing, it's, it's you're taking the worst sides of every, you're taking the worst sides of business ownership and being an employee. You're taking the side of being an employee where you have no control over what you're selling and you have no control over how much money it's possible for you to make. And then you're taking the side of being a business owner where it's like you have all the risk of having to spend money up front and no guarantee that the market is going to have a desire and no benefits for your actual work, right? You take the worst sides of both of those and combine those. That's what MLMs are. All right, let's see what Gabby's friends do in MLMs. Acupuncturist, physical therapist, certified aromatherapist, and wellness enthusiast Bianca Baldini has been successfully using Young Living products on herself and her patients for the past five years. In January of 2009, she stopped buying products retail and became a wholesale distributor. She was inspired to make this shift after taking advice from her Young Living mentors and becoming aware of the possibility of creating a steady paycheck. My first intention was to get my own monthly personal products paid for. One of my motivations for this was that I'm an entrepreneur. As an acupuncturist, unlike corporate employees, I have a fee for a service business, and if I don't go to work or I get sick or go on vacation, I don't get paid. Utilizing this model afforded me an opportunity to get a monthly check in the mail I could rely on. I get to enjoy and encourage the colleagues in my organization. I believe the products, and I've created an additional revenue stream. The best part of it all is that I'm able to empower each individual in my organization to create the perfect trifecta, health, wellness, and financial abundance. Dude, who paid Gabby to write this article? For real, this is just so much hard selling. Why did the Huffington Post even want to publish this? This is awful. So Young Living is an absolutely shit company. It has some of the biggest cult vibes I've seen from any of them. I've covered Young Living on this channel a few times and on Your Morning Guru, we did a whole week delving into Young Living. Gary Young, the founder of Young Living, is responsible for multiple people's deaths, allegedly. He has gone to jail multiple times for practicing medicine without a license. He regularly ran unlicensed health clinics that got shut down. He tried to cure people's things with oils all the time. Uh, I'm not gonna go into all the death causes by Gary Young, founder of Young Living, but that company is just absolutely awful. I don't have anything against essential oils themselves if you're using them safely, like if you're using them for aromatherapy. And as Gabby points out, this person is a certified aromatherapist and I have no issues with certified aromatherapy. I have friends who work in aromatherapy and I can definitely see the benefits to smelling something and, you know, working with the emotions that it causes you to feel because, you know, smelling is one of our five senses. When we activate our five senses that helps our brains function and things like that, I can absolutely see the benefits to aromatherapy. The problem with companies like Young Living is that they encourage people to use essential oils to cure a bunch of physical ailments that essential oils do nothing for when someone really needs licensed medical treatment from an actual doctor for that, which is something completely different, and it leads to a lot of people having health problems. Additionally, Young Living has been the subject of class action lawsuits for being a pyramid scheme where most people, again, were losing tons of money. So I have absolutely no faith in Young Living. If this person, this person I'm guessing probably makes her money with her actual business, which is doing acupuncture. And so when she has acupuncture clients, she makes money doing that. I don't, I don't believe she's really making money in Young Living. Though she may be young, she is far from new to the network marketing arena. Co-founder of Team Northrop, Kate Northrop Muller, has built her entire business model around the USANA network marketing supplement company. So I actually don't know much about this company. I've never delved into this one before. I've heard this name before. Chris, Christine, Christiane Northrop? Let me look her up real quick. I've heard this name before. Because if this girl's mom is a celebrity, then 
of course she's making big money because you're her mom's a celebrity. That has nothing to do with being in an MLM. Okay, Christian Northrup is a former obstetrics and gynecology physician and author who has embraced pseudoscientific alternative medicine and anti-vaccine conspiracy theories. She has a history of opposing vaccination and has embraced QAnon ideology during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, it looks like she wrote a lot of books too. So she is a famous conspiracy theory influencer who used to be a doctor, I guess, or maybe she still has a license. I don't know. But anyway, this girl's mom was famous and successful. So like, I don't believe that Kate Kate's success has anything to do with the MLM company itself. My friend Kelly Lynn Adams has used a multi-level marketing business as a launch pad for her entrepreneurial future. Five years ago, Kelly was looking for botanical and herbal skincare products to help her pl problematic skin. I have a recommendation for that. It's called going to the dermatologist. If you're having skin issues, you maybe want to go to the dermatologist. I used to have lots of skin issues. I had terrible eczema for a while. Uh, so I went to the dermatologist. I'm just saying, maybe, maybe go to the dermatologist. That's just a wild idea. Just crazy idea, right? But no, that's not what she did. Instead, she went to Arbonne International. She soon discovered that Arbonne was not only a product line she loved, but a way to move out of the nine to five rat race. I love my extra check every month from Arbonne and continue building my team while still working a full-time job. What could be better than cho choosing who you work with, talking about products that you love and believing in and not having to trade your time for money. I've finally found the perfect career. I am most passionate about the fact that I am able to empower, motivate, and inspire each person on my team to have whatever it is in life that they want. So this is, this is so annoying when MLMs do this. They always act like their business is the only place you can get these things. And oftentimes you don't even get these things in an MLM. So when you work in an MLM, do you, are you out of the nine to five rat race? I guess technically in the sense that you don't have to work at certain hours. You don't have to go into an office. You can work from home, but there are lots of jobs where you can work from home. Actually, since the pandemic, a lot of people who had former office jobs have now been working from home instead. I've been working from home for the past two years, basically. So there's plenty of ways to work from home without working for an MLM. There's plenty of remote work opportunities out there that you can look for. If it's about having certain hours, there are jobs you can get that they don't, they pay per project and they don't even care how many hours you work. MLMs are absolutely not the only way to do this. And and on top of that, MLMs don't even have a guarantee you're going to make money. When they say not trading time for in an MLM, you're not trading time for money. It's that you're trading time, but you're not guaranteed to get money in return. I think the way that they're framing this is the idea that, okay, in an MLM, it's not like you have to clock in certain hours and then you'll get paid per hours worked, which is true. But if you, you could work, end up working like, 80 hours a week and making nothing or even losing money because, again, you're not guaranteed to make any money in an MLM because there may not be enough people who actually want your product. You may have dried up the entire recruitment pool already because you came in too late into it, things like that. So you actually have a much bigger risk of not being able to make money in an MLM and spending even more time than you would working a 40 hour a week job. And I'm not saying that nine to five jobs are without flaws. I think there are plenty of flaws in the corporate world that we should absolutely talk about. Just earlier in this video, I talked about how a lot of them don't have good protections for mothers after they give birth and things like that. So there's a reason that we have these issues in the first place and people feel the need to join MLMs. It's because a lot of those nine to five jobs have a ton of problems that we need to address. But working in an MLM is not going to be the answer. Just because something else is flawed doesn't mean that this is better in any way. Because it's not. It's actually worse. You're going to end up losing money. Choosing who you work with, talking about products you love and all of that. Again, you can do that if you start your own business. You could, if you, she's passionate about skincare and is passionate about selling skincare, because again, an MLM isn't just about being passionate about skincare. If you're working for Arbonne, you have to be passionate about selling. You have to be passionate about recruitment. You have to be passionate about hiring people and managing a team and doing all of that, right? If skincare is what she was most passionate about, why not go to school for dermatology? Or why not start um, working with a dermatologist to start a little skincare store online with curated products or something? Why not start a, a, a work at a store that sells skincare products? Like there's so many other options for the thing that you're passionate about. MLM is never the answer. In addition, the products these ladies are selling are perfectly aligned with recession theories on spending in a downturn economy. Oh, okay. So she's talking about this in terms of the 2008 recession, right? I did a video where I actually talked about this in terms of how LipSense tried to use this idea 
uh, when the pandemic, the COVID pandemic first started. So I made a video, when, when the COVID pandemic started, uh, MLMs were going wild with how they were recruiting people. You can see some of my old videos from, from back at the beginning of the pandemic when I was talking about ways that those companies were exploiting that. And they talked about this, like, okay, people, here's how people spend in a downturn economy. This is why you should sell this during COVID. And she's doing this with the 2008 recession. It's a pattern. It's like clockwork. When times are tough, we buy lipstick. The lipstick theory proposes that during a recession, women will purchase inexpensive indulgences such as lipstick. This theory implies that when we still want to treat ourselves, even when we can't afford to make more extravagant purchases. So this theory is actually true. Like what she's saying here isn't wrong. The lipstick theory, I don't think it's just women. I don't think there's anything related to gender that has has to do with people's purchasing habits regarding a downturn economy. If I'm wrong, someone can let me know in the comments below. But I believe that that theory from what I've seen from other sources tends to generally be true that when there's a when we can't afford bigger luxuries, we tend to spend on smaller luxuries because we still like to have some level of luxuries in our lives. And that's a thing that did happen, you know, during the pandemic, people were buying a lot of smaller things to, you know, keep their spirits up and things like that. I was definitely doing that to an extent. I bought so many mugs. But yes, so this is this is a thing that does really happen. However, exploiting a recession to sell small MLM products is not the way to go about it. She's saying, furthermore, vitamin products and non-pharmaceutical healing aids such as essential oils will thrive during a recession. But thousands of people without health insurance can't afford to get sick. Therefore, they load up on vitamins for immunity. Is this what people mean when they say she said the quiet part out loud? She actually said it. I didn't think she was actually going to say it. I thought, I thought she was going to leave that part unsaid. I didn't think she was literally going to say, and therefore, this is why we exploit poor people. Here's why we exploit people who can't have health insurance. The U.S. healthcare system is fucked. People don't have access to health insurance. A lot of people can't afford it. Uh, so you can sell your products to them. You can sell them alternative medicines that might actually kill them. She really said it. Gabby Bernstein's the worst. Oh my god, I don't like her at all. Which is why we're going to be covering her more on this channel. I have a lot more about her to talk about. So that was Gabby Bernstein's pro MLM Huffington Post article. Let me know your guys' thoughts on it in the comments below. I was pretty disgusted by this. But if you guys want to help take part in some activism towards the anti-multi-level marketing movement, then check out the link in the description below where you can sign up for the, the conference that will be taking place on Zoom the weekend after this weekend. So June 10th and 11th. I hope to see you guys there. Again, my panel is going to be during session six on Saturday, June 11th. So I'm very excited to see some of you guys in the chat and to be able to talk about some of the ways that we as content creators can advocate for helping people speak out against these companies and helping these companies stop exploiting so many people when people out here like Gabby, who have a much bigger audience than I do and much more influence and much more money are out here promoting them and basically telling people, yeah, it's totally fine to exploit this. I hate it. I hate it so much. But that was today's video. I will see you guys again on Friday for another video. But in the meantime, please continue supporting small businesses and have a fantastic start to your Wednesday. Bye. Hit you some nuts. There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should take up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys asked for it.